Engineering nonlinearity is looking to develop nonlinear design tools for dynamic structures such as aircraft or helicopters or wind turbines. In engineering, dynamic problems are quite often uh, considered towards the end of the design process and traditionally people use linear theories to solve them. And in recent years there's been more and more pressure to make structures perform better and better and then these linear theories tend to break down. So there was a growing need within the research community and in industry to address this issue of non-linearity. In a linear system you put in a sine wave you get out a sine wave. In a non-linear system you put in a sine wave and then you get out something completely distorted. That is non-linearity and we're trying to make some sense out of, uh, out of this perturbations and chaos. I was lucky enough to start with the engineering linearity from the, from the beginning. That has been absolutely amazing for me. Imagine just finishing your university and going straight into this huge program with five different universities. I mean, I met so many new people and the people were so nice and constantly wanting to collaborate with you and asking what your interests are and, and how can we, what can we do to help you and you can help us. And it's a really friendly environment. It's, it's collaborative. I mean, that's how a lot of us do research. You know, I'm kind of a mathematician who collaborates with engineers and, um, you know, the best ideas seem to, in my view, uh, arise by accident. You know, that's how ideas generation works. So, for example, just recently we found a completely different area of collaboration for some of the stuff we've been doing with um, harsh nonlinearity and dynamics of friction, together with some people who are interested in um, haptics, which is how you feel things, how you feel textures, etc. Essentially, because the project exists and we put out some of our more theoretical stuff, and we do, if you like, the public engagement, then problems come to you. I have worked in collaboration with uh, Augusta Westland uh, for uh, the vibration control of um, an helicopter. What we were interested to do is work with their active control system which aim to reduce the vibration inside the cabin of an helicopter, taking into account the non-linear behavior of the structure, which traditionally is not taken in, in, into account. I'm very much interested in using the developed uh, theories on non-linear systems for vibration control. So we can implement these theories to control the vibrations in buildings, bridges, in aircrafts, in any kinds of application. And that is where uh, I think I can contribute to this project. What well, really up to this project was probably considered as quite an esoteric sort of applied maths problem, a lot of these uh, nonlinear topics. But now this project's really seen it becoming something that happens in laboratories, on benches, and it's going to move hopefully towards industrial um, consideration and practice quite soon. But what's interesting is coming through is that the recognition that it's not just non-linearities people need to be considering, but also uncertainty. We can never be sure that the models we're using are the right models. So it's interesting to see that there's been a lot of, uh, of work and research work being done in that area. And uh, the role that I have, of course, is to try and bring those things back into Airbus. The project that we're involved in at the moment is to do with micro speakers, which are the kind of speakers that you find in mobile phones. And it turns out that there is a non-linearity in there, which is to do with the fact that they have to be driven very hard sometimes. Uh, and if you use the wrong kind of non-linearity in order to limit how much they give out, then they sound very horrible. We're very grateful for the support that our industrial partners give us to the project. Uh, some of those industrial partners also sit on the steering committee which advises the project about the research and development direction it should take. The nice thing about a big project like this is that it allows a lot of people doing, trying to utilize nonlinearity and exploit nonlinearity for beneficial purposes to mingle ideas and uh, share ideas and try and make it a, a more broad and uniform theme. Individual universities have built up quite strong links with some of the industries and they will be continuing those industrial projects uh, in those areas as well. We've uh, generated a lot of new ideas, we've trained and, and enhanced the careers of many of the people involved, created a, a fantastic network. Um, so the challenge for us now is to think about how we sustain that and move forward to you know, greater challenges. And I think what's interesting particularly is that 
once you've done a big project of this type, it, it makes you realise that that can be a platform for things which are even more ambitious. And I think that's what we need to target our attention on, is where can this platform take us in the future.